Good morning. This video is titled <clears throat> The Mark of the Beast is Now. The bar it's now. It's in fact it's past. <clears throat> We've done a, a previous video proving this with two uh witnesses. Uh you know, just a couple examples uh historically of the mark of the beast. The Israelites had the mark of the beast while they were under Pharaoh because they're a whoring with an earthly power. So <clears throat> there's only, uh, in all truth, this is a king, our God is a king of moral absolutes. Yes and no's, life or death, uh, you know, dark or light. And we, we have a, a, a foreign concept <laughs> of something called earthly gods, or uh, I should say uh, secularism, right? Under seculars, secularism, we the people-ism, we are all polytheists. This is a polytheistic system just like under Rome. You could, we're allowed to worship whatever God we want, right? That is the, part of the, the, the deception of the captivity is just like uh, Adam and Eve. They worshiped with their lips Yahweh the whole time, but they didn't obey. Obedience is what gets you kicked out of the kingdom. Uh, uh, depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. Right? The king, <laughs> the king wants a kingdom with a bride who's not whoring at all. And, and because we're unwilling to challenge and, uh, and give ourselves a self-audit, that's really what, what the prophets come asking for. This was a, a good presentation by uh, Pastor Jim Staley, uh, who's in jail right now. And by the way, I know I was just thinking about this yesterday, through repentance, uh, Jim Staley can get out of jail free <laughs> through the Jubilee. So... This is a great opportunity for a vast, vast majority of people who have uh, family members who are, uh, you know, victims of the phony drug war, which is just a tool to keep cannabis and to create this Babylonian programming that uh, cannabis of Exodus is profane. Because I am a living witness and prophet that is eagerly hoping that Israel will test this prophet or stone me, right? Put me to the test. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, pass with flying colors, uh, except that, you know, my limitations are certainly this. I haven't ever created a miracle before, and I haven't, you know, physically healed a, uh, you know, paralyzed woman, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I, I, I hope I'm not going to be ever accused that I'm not working on it because I'm fully uh, hoping and praying and, and trying to be Yahweh's ambassador and ambassador to the kingdom. You know, I, I'm, that's what the apostles are, proclaiming the good news throughout all of the land every day on a YouTube video or Facebook video that I got some very good tidings. <laughs> And we're having a pep rally. We're having a celebration pep rally of the Israelite victory over the adversary where we have a debt forgiveness rehearsal at the Feast of Tents as it's commanded by our king. Our commander in chief tells us to do not forsake the, the uh, assembly. Do not uh, escape, because we called out ones, the ones that want to be monotheistic and only serve our Creator King. The Creator King, which empowers us with supernatural abilities to be able to have understanding, to have uh, direct revelation. All these guys in here, and gals, right? They were all having direct revelations with their King, and that King uh, enabled that partially for many of them cannabis of Exodus. I don't know if it's an absolute, but it's a 
these guys are all getting their anointing on. They were all uh, at the altar of incense, like Zacharias in uh, uh, Luke 1, 8 through 12. I'm not making it up. It's in there. I didn't put it in there. Right? So your job, Israel, is to test me and see if I've done my research or not. Do you see if I can uh, support my claim? My claim is this king is alive and this king wants victory immediately because the quicker that we repent and turn from our polytheistic ways, rendering to Caesar, tithing to Caesar, obeying Caesar, uh, Rothschild, Rockefeller, uh, Pharaoh, you know, the pyramid money, right? With the ob obelisk in the Washington, D.C., right? They don't put the statues up until they got the statutes all written down to get us to commit to the satanic oath to the United States Constitution. That is a satanic oath. Members of the police, military, and government. Yah has come to put you on notice. <laughs> he has checked all of the titles. People of Earth, here's some good news. Yahweh has checked all the titles and he's eager to have a conversation with Donald Trump and uh, tell him all about what happens to Moses when he resists. <laughs> I mean, isn't that good news? Well, it's good news unless you're idolatrous, right? If you're a, pol a, a polytheist, which is uh, in effect a polygamist, Yah is not a polygamist. Right? He wants his bride to obey only him. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, who knew that our God, I mean, what a shocker. He wants a bride that only obeys his law and morality and forms his government with no usury in its money system that allows all of his children to issue their own money, forgive their debts every seven years, and repatriate the land at least once in a generation. I mean, how wise is this king? What sort of people have such a, a magnificent, high-minded, egalitarian, a loving, forgiving, and magnificent, miracle-creating? You know, if I was, if I was, you know all the crap they sell you in Babylon, right? If I'm here to sell you on this king, the king that forgets debt, forgives debts, the king that whips money lenders, what, right? If this, if we could, if we could go to the store today and buy a bottle of this king, right? That, that turns you into the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? That he comes with good tidings. He comes with the ability, ability to take a paralyzed Israel who's just laying there, right? Imagine you have a paralyzed... Uh, <laughs> we did a video about how Israel is a paralyzed woman, right? She's paralyzed. So <clears throat> the reason why Yah speaks in parables is it makes it easier to choke down truths. And truths are painful. Like when I say that we are all polytheists and not monotheists, the Pope ain't, the, uh, you know, there's nobody, unless you're living John the Baptist style off grid, and I'm, now I'm going to tie this into the mark of the beast, right? John the Baptist was living <clears throat> homeless, right? Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, the son of man never has a, a place to set his head. These guys were like homeless hippies, right? The, the, in the Old Testament, they're, you know, they're, they're in the wilderness. The truth is outside the wilderness. What I'm telling you sounds totally foreign in many ways because it's the opposite of what they've been teaching in the churches and the synagogues, in the public schools and the, the Babylonian television programming. You've been mind controlled since birth to believe lies. All of us have. All of us, all right? So it's painful to come out of it. So here is 
God telling us, hey, if, if you find yourself under these sorts of conditions, right? It's an owner's manual. Oh, I got a flat tire. How do I fix it? Hey, everybody's in debt and the, the bankers are killing people without any form of justice. They just kill presidents in the street. They engineer false flags like 9-11. Hey, if all that kind of crazy stuff's going on, let me look in the owner's manual. What do I do? Well, what does Jeremiah say? You know, Jeremiah convicts the people. He has to go to the people and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We only got two options. It's moral absolutism. One man, one woman, period. Marriage, man, woman, period. And we don't want to believe that we actually are, are commanded to take on Babylon, that we have to defy acts of Caesar non-violently in order to overcome this system of already existed, existing mark of the beast. We have the mark of the beast right now. It's just that we've been so uh, conditioned to believe it's not there and not having the eyes of truth and be willing to see that it's there. Because, uh, you know, in Revelation, it's clear. It says no, no man will be able to buy or sell without, uh, you know, worshiping the mark. And the thing is people hear that word worship. So they think that, oh, that means like getting down on your knees and you beg or you got to get a tattoo or it's, you know, it's the barcode or it's the birth certificate that it's some kind of uh, physical thing. You know, like we signed a document. And, and it's not that, it's just our, our worship means to how we live, right? So if we're live, living a life that's all based upon money getting, as this one is, uh, you know, who, the, 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 the kings have the most money, <laughs> right? It's not, the amount of money isn't based upon how noble you are, it's the opposite. It's a, you know, if you have a meritocracy that the people who have the most money are the most holy, right? That is a meritocracy. The least sinful have more. In this system, right, under the mark of the beast, that means the most sinful have the most, like the Rothschilds, because they got the printing press for the money, right? The, they, the Federal Reserve's just a private company, right? That, that's just a printing press company, <laughs> just like the United States. These are all just companies and corporations and subdivisions and layers of control of enslavement, but the overarching slave system is, we have two options in this whole life, is we either live under the kingdom or we live under a dark theocracy called Babylon, in a captivity under a curse of the mon money lenders from uh, Deuteronomy 28, 43. The curse is implemented through the money lenders. <clears throat> so, no man can buy or sell without, you know, if we change that word to from worship to obey, right? No man could buy or sell without uh, obeying the mark of the beast, which is polytheism and man's law. The United States Constitution, voting, majorities. Yah doesn't need a, hey everybody, <laughs> I want everyone to know that Yah does not need a majority. <laughs> Dave, uh, you know, Goliath is going, yeah, yeah, that's true. Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nebuchadnezzar, or, or Cyrus, right? How did the, how was it that the, that king was so cooperative with the second exodus? Why was Cyrus so cooperative? Because he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've read about it. I've done, I've done my research because Cyrus was a wise king who was anointed, right? Even though he was foreign, he was anointed and he was wise enough to know, oh, <laughs> that is the cat. This Yahweh cat, he took down Pharaoh. He's the legitimate man. He's, he is the most high. He the, he's the one that does declare the end from the beginning. For what kind of God is Yahweh? He's the legit. He is the most high. He's the one that anoints and allows us to go a, through a, uh, a rite of passage from being <clears throat> uh, dead in Christ to being alive in Christ. 
to being a revelator, right? Having the Holy Spirit. Because if, if you're not thinking on these terms, you don't have the Holy Spirit because your, your mind is still uh, polytheistic. We have to, Hebrew means to be poly, uh, monotheistic, cross over to being monotheistic, and then that is the rebirth. That is when you're born again. Because one day you were rebelling from the king and, 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 and disobeying, so he says, depart from me, uh, ye who practice lawlessness. You have your own individual fall. This is the temple, right? We, in, in order to, to refuse the mark, take the mark of the beast out, because it's in there already, in our temple and in our forehead. We got to pull it out and bring the king in, right? This is what we practice on the Sabbath. Take the leaven out, clean it up, clean up the temple, right? Repentance. Only Yahweh can make laws. Put that in there. Put, put the ingredients of uh, those who have the seal of the Lamb, where we're going to, a, a generation of 144,000, this prophet's telling you how this is going to work out. We get 144,000 children with their first fruit, male, virgin boys, undefiled by women, that they never learn anything. They never learn a thing, nothing about Babylon, except in their history as a, you know, like how we remember there used to be slavery, uh, chain slavery, physical chains of slavery. Um, <clears throat> you know, before the Civil War, they just, all they did is, they, all, they put all of us on a pl the plantation. They just took the chains away and go, look, hey, you don't have chains, physical. Uh, you're not slave, but you, we're all debt slaves. We're all bond servants, just like we were 3,500 years ago under Pharaoh. So the point is, our transformation is to recognize the capture, all right? So there's three, three steps. You know, there's a movie, Finding Dory. There's three steps uh, to, to this transformation, right? This rite of passage. All of us have to go through this rite of passage, right? The climactic movie in the movie Dory you know, Disney is satanic all day long, but you, you, when you uh, have given new eyes to see, you can see the underlying story. Mo uh, and that's all the prophet is, you know? Yah wants there. This is a God who is commanding prophets to train prophets. I'm, we are building, Jim Callahan and I and my wife, my family, are committed that, to the process that we do not want our son Christian, uh, Robert Walton, uh, to be going to any school or homeschool or and minimize his interaction as much as we can with Babylon. And it's, it's you know, Babylon, all it is is a training center to take the mark of the beast <laughs> subtly. Like a, it's like an IV that they put on you from birth, just like in the movie Matrix, that it just teaches you to be a human battery where you just, it feels comfortable. Oh, and there's pretty pictures, and, and there's still uh, the kingdom in terms of uh, the natural beauty, so we still have access to that. But what we're missing is our access to the king and have direct revelation with our king to transform us through this process where we create, uh, we purify Israel. That's all that's going on. We're just pure, and it's painful, right? It's, it's a burning process. It's the baptism by fire judgment. Are we willing to be monotheists and defy acts of Caesar, right? And it requires sacrifice. And people know that. They know that there's going to be a, uh, if, if you really go all the way, sell out. You know, as the apostles, they sold out. They were all martyred, right? They sold out to the king, and but they did it with joy, like this, right? <clears throat> the point is, is you just... Commit yourself to the process. Hey, my king was willing to die for me. Why would I not die for him? Because we have to overcome this mark of the beast. Because uh, a couple of examples, mark of the beast in, in the Bible, uh, <clears throat> uh, three witnesses, uh, Old Testament Elijah, during his period of prophecy, he uh, there were a hundred prophets who were hiding in caves. They were cut off. Uh, the mark of the beast allows for those who control the buying and selling 
they make it so people can't buy and sell without the mark of the week. So if they're rebels, right? If they're of the mindset that I'm trying to describe to you, they are defying acts of Caesar. They are, what are they? They're, they're enemies of the state. They're financial terrorists. They are seditious to the United States Constitution. That, that's how, how, here's how Babylon is going to describe me. He's a financial terrorist. When I'm all, all I'm advocating is obeying our God who says usury is sin. Oh, the one that says we're supposed to tithe only to Yahweh. Right? Jesus said that. Render to Caesar what is Caesar and render to uh, Yahweh to what is Yahweh's. Everything is Yahweh's. All of the earth and all of the inhabitants therein. All of it. Every, every, uh, <clears throat> this is what monotheism is. <clears throat> Uh, man cannot make law. Period. That's monotheism. Polytheism is we need to elect our lawmakers. We need power to the people. We the people ism. Uh, humanism. Right? So even if you're a Christian, but you're uh, unequally yoked by the U.S. Constitution, right? You signed a deal with the devil. Surely thou will not die <laughs> if you transgress the law. Making man making laws. That's so that's rebellion in the kingdom. So <clears throat> our God wants monotheistic children. Because otherwise they're not his. They're just he's disowned them. He's divorced this wife who is whoring still unrepentantly. So we have to go through this process of uh, rescue. Part of the rescue is the acknowledgement that you're a slave and your soul has been called by Yahweh. You've been selected for duty and you're responding to duty, fully selling out in the same way and be born again and cross over to being a monotheist. That's what it means to be born again, that you want to marry God. He is my savior. You don't believe just by saying, hey, yeah, I believe in a little bit of uh, United States Constitution. <laughs> you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little porn on the weekends, a little Tom Brady here, right? A little bit of uh, whatever, right? All of these foreign gods, <clears throat> strange gods, believing that I can do whatever I want, that I can just go uh, do whatever. Hakuna Matata, right? This is a God of whatever the opposite of Hakuna Matata is. <laughs> that's the kind of God that this is. This is an ingredient of our God. He is razor focused on overcoming Babylon, whipping money lenders, turning over their tables. He put it in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I do not want you to be borrowers who are servants to moneylenders. So come to our pep rally in Breckenridge, Colorado, uh, October 6th through 8th, uh, where we're going to practice having a jubilee where people become monotheists. And we celebrate it because that moment where, where more and more of us agree to commit to being monotheists, we are purifying the bride and it happens in seconds. And we've created a musical playlist to help create and grow your mind and strengthen your spirituality. Strengthen your tribal identity. Strengthen, flex your muscles, grow these muscles. And it doesn't matter what you look like, what color you are, this is a, these are the ingredients of this king. He doesn't care nothing. What He doesn't care if you've got legs. Military veterans, some of you who are thinking about committing suicide, right? There's a, 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 a monstrous, <laughs> life-transforming event in your future. There is a great king, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Who's, who's speaking right now through these lips? And he said, oh, come to me, my people. Come to me, I have good news. I have the news of the Jubilee. 
because he says while he's anointed, right, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to heal, right? Good news to the poor. But if you think it, you're thinking that you're rich and that's how Babylon corrupts, it's like, well, I got all this car, you know, I've got this stuff and I've got an RV, I've got a, I got a business, you know, uh, surely God has blessed me and therefore it's all good and I don't really need to have a, a spirituality check, right? Obviously I got a lot of stuff, we're not slaves. Right? If that's the that's that's the uh, mindset that Babylon creates to all varying degrees, right? A polytheism. <clears throat> so we have to go through this painful transformation of realizing that the United States government is the ad our adversary. I, in order for us to do our duty and to overcome the captivity, for surely Babylon shall fall, just like Pharaoh. <laughs> Come we go shake down Babylon one more time. This this is nothing. We've done this lots of times in our past. Right? I mean, that's why Cyrus knew what time it was. That's <laughs> right. He wasn't about go, <laughs> Yahweh. He his his lips confessed, his voice, uh, his lips confessed, and his, and his knee bowed to Yahweh. Don't you see what's happening here? N nobody, no, no earthly power, no matter how many tanks, chariots, rockets. And this is a big fear thing is people are terrified to have an exodus. They're, they're, they're terrified to even consider that they have to defy uh, Caesar, just like the apostles in Acts 17, 7, in, in order to turn the world upside down. So no matter whether you got legs or not, or if you're white or black or Indian or whatever, this king wants to return first nation status to all peoples of the earth so that Israel and Abraham's seed, including, uh, including um, Muslims, Ishmael, right? Abraham's seed includes Ishmael. Tell me another prophet that's talking about how Ishmael and Israel are going to cooperate to overcome Esau. How, and how Esau right now has the ability, you know, Esau is impersonating Jacob. We should know that from the Lion King, right? So, <clears throat> so I, got, I got to convict you of the captivity and that you have the mark right now, Yahweh is telling me. And that is... Uh, Number one, um, with um, I'm giving you three examples of, of examples where people were, you know, the Israelites. <laughs> they were cut. They were all whoring with Pharaoh. They are living under a polytheistic. They are obeying a polytheistic system, and then when they left there through the Exodus, they took upon their forehead and their right hand a non-physical mark of the commandments. It was part of their marriage, their preparation for marriage, to become monotheistic, right? And then to be in the wilderness, um, right? It's, it's a process where we have to create a system or move to a system where we're only obedient to the laws of our king. And that includes us becoming tribal judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands, right? And we're, we're, we become the enemy to the state because we're, we, not because we hate them or want to fight them, it's just because we are obeying Yahweh's laws uh, as tribal, uh, think of American Indians that just said, hey, we're, we're not, we're, we're going to shut all these casinos down, right? Right, that's a good example. These, these casinos, that has been cultural appropriation. <laughs> Creating casinos in Indian grounds is cultural appropriation. Or, for instance, like uh, saying that American Indians promote the whole uh, gay, lesbian, transgender thing, that is cultural appropriation, right? Because tribal people don't believe any of that nonsense. They don't believe that, uh, we're, that you're supposed to pay a, a fee to live on the land. 
any taxes, right? The tribal Indians never paid them. And I am not proposing, the kingdom is not uh, uh, primitive. The kingdom is full of technology. Greater technology than what we have right now. This is good news to the people if, for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see that the kingdom has greater technology. Don't you see it? Can you see with the king's eyes and the king's vision of greatness as an ambassador for him? Because that's what he's calling all of his people to do right now and go out into, uh, in, in, with the co-mission of twos going into the synagogues or the churches of our day, they're the same thing, they're both institutions of polytheism, and proclaim the good news of this transformational process where you become a monotheist and then you become born again, baptized for repentance and then uh, baptized with the anointing, the baptism of by, uh, by fire. This judgment of are you willing to become a monotheist and Yahweh will test you and we are to challenge one, one another and contend for the faith so that we make sure that we are always being monotheists. <clears throat> and those prophets who come forward first that just get it first, they're nothing special because there's going to be lots and lots of them that are way better than I am that follow behind me. Hopefully my son Christian, by even age 12, he'll be able to uh, uh, spar and contend for the, with the faith or for the faith of the good news of the kingdom uh, uh, you know, during periods of captivity. Jesus was coming with the good news at age 12. They didn't want to hear it, but nobody could uh, out-debate him because the prophets who are speaking this level of monotheism are going to be hated, hated by your existing, our existing religious establishment at all levels because they are largely hirelings. They are largely hirelings and cowards just by their activities because none of them are telling you the truth of the captivity. The captivity is the mark right now. So again, proving it, the Israelites, all right, so that's one uh, proof uh, was with, the first proof was with, uh, okay, that was after. Start off with the Israelites. They were whoring, they went out, and then they, they had the seal of the lamb Right, the seal of the Passover lamb process, the Passover. The Passover feasts are essential to understanding this transformation. All right, so they had to go from obeying Pharaoh to now obeying only Yahweh. We have to do the same thing in order to cross over, right? All right, so another example of the mark of the beast is John the Baptist. Uh, he was forced to live homeless. And then finally, for fear of the Jews, Many people would not witness Jesus' miracles such when, as when he anointed uh, and he took a blind man, which I'm trying to do with you right now as a parable. Jesus gives his prophets the assignments to do the things that he did, meaning may take a, a, a paralyzed woman, Israel, right? This prophet, prophet is under assignment. My, I have a responsibility to get Israel on her feet. <laughs> As a, as a boot, I did a video called a, a prophet can be likened unto a boot camp drill instructor at, at a time of war. That's what I'm doing right now is trying to sound the alarm. We are under the mark of the beast right now. Uh, we have the enemy in the fences. We're in captivity, right? We're all working for Pharaoh. Come on. It's simple now. Come on. Don't make me uh, go backwards all the time. We're, we're in a captivity. Okay. So another example is that, like I said, the, 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 there's a child who is blind since birth, right? Is that not all of us? We are all blind since birth. And then Jesus anointed our eyes so that we could see, right? I'm trying to convey that to you guys. So now we can see, if, if, you, if you can see with the eyes that I see with, and hear with the ears that I hear with, I hear Yahweh. I use cannabis of Exodus, and it helps me to for, uh, uh, put my troubles aside, put my pain aside, put my thinking aside, put my uh, ego, my ambitions, my will, uh, my temptations, my 
laziness, my fear, my uh, lack of confidence, all my self-limiting uh, fear-based idolatry, right? Who you fear, you obey. So if you're fr afraid of the IRS, you're like, ah, oh, man, I just get, you're extorted. You just pay because you're being extorted, right? That's a simple truth. I, I don't love, I don't want to pay for these schools for sodomy. I don't want, I don't want to have, I don't want to, I know that I'm unequally wrote, yoked with this devil system. I don't want to support with my labor or my, my love or, and, and I, I do not willingly engage in that contract. I remove my consent. I haven't filed an income tax return for six years. I'm a year and a half late on my property tax. I'm, I'm a conscientious objector to Babylonian captivity. But I know that potentially I can, I'm, I, but I'm convicted by God to only serve him as a monotheist. That's who Wayne Keith Walton is. I am a bond servant. I want to work only for Yahweh. And I'm looking for like-minded people. I'm praying that Yahweh will bring me like-minded people like Jim Callahan, Henry Garman, Brett Jones, Brent Vanderwall. I know there's others <clears throat> that want to be in direct relationship with only as a monothe uh, be in relationship with a monotheistic God who's a jealous God. I'm trying to return the eyes of, of a, blind, a, ch a child who's been blind since birth. Everyone who's listening to my voice to recover your, your vision and see a vision for victory over Babylon where we don't have to be in fear of the Jews, that we don't have to have war and rumors of war, that we no longer have to have the money with the funny pyramid on the back. Uh, and George Wa Washington, who is a polytheist, right? James Madison was a polytheist just like we are by living and obeying this system. So I, I hope that I'm, uh, as the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So if you are poor in heart and you understand that you're in captivity, I want to give you the whole vision. Rescue, rehabilitate, release. There, there's a three-step program of transformation, a rite of passage right a, a, a baptism by fire where if you want to be born again like uh, uh, John the Denver John the Denver <laughs> John Denver <laughs> uh, he said in Rocky Mountain High his song he has a song Rocky Mountain High come to come to Breckenridge Colorado for the Feast of Tents live out in the woods for a week in direct monotheistic relationship with your God, this Feast of Tents, where we practiced how to have a jubilee. Joy, like un, undescribable joy of having a monotheistic relationship with Yahweh, where we all be, reject this disgusting polytheism that we've lived in, under our entire lives and that we become more like the Amish and more like the American Indian and uh, actually commit to all First Nation people of the world. Everybody's invited, all First Nation people, all the tribes. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land and all the inhabitants thereof, that there, come, there comes a king who celebrates his coronation when he is put in the temple, crowned in the temple, he rewards his anointed priests and kings. All of us get anointed. As John Denver says, he was born a monotheist. He was born monotheist. He was born in the summer of his 27th year. How can you be born in the summer of your 27th year? 
an autobiographical song by John Denver says, because he got high in the Rockies with Cannabis of Exodus. It does, it does the things which Yahweh proclaims it does. It gives people a new heart. It gives people a, a new life. It gives them the ability to prophesy and appreciate music. Uh, and, and, and some of these artists we're going to have performing at our Feast of Tents. You can check them out not now at uh, YouTube for free, a playlist, a free playlist, which is titled to get excited by other people who also have a monotheistic relationship. They know they're in captivity and they want to have a monotheistic relationship, but they're waiting for 144,000 other families who want to do the exact thing, who send their children to some school of the prophets created in their community where their kids don't have to grow up being slaves under the already existing polytheistic mark of the beast, the 666. The 666 is a symbol. It's not, it's the symbol of the star of Remphan. It's the star of the people who carried the Israelites into the captivity. It's the, it's the star of the people who murdered the prophets, who hate the law of Moses. They're polytheists. Our king is a monotheist. All right, so I'm going to read some uh, Jeremiah. Uh, and I, 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 want, I want you to have a transformation and be convicted. So think of Jeremiah, who he's condemning. He's condemning of whoring of polytheists. That's all of us. Obeying. Obey, worship and obey are the same thing, right? When, when you get married, right? When you get married to a husband and wife, you're supposed to obey your husband. I know it's painful, but that's, that is the uh, morality of this monotheistic relation. It's a tribal, tribal. The tribes overcome, the tribes regather. A tribal people uh, live close to God. A tribal people are self-sufficient and they issue their own money and they don't permit usury and they don't uh, turn their daughters into whores. They don't sell their kids off as, they don't sell their lands. The land is holy. Tribal, tribal, tribal. We, we've been so far removed from it. So uh, the, the, the channel on YouTube is Christian Israelite Reggae. And it's about a people who want to reject the mark of the beast. They, un, they understand they're in captivity with songs like Vampire. They understand that the mark of the beast creates a parasitic system of vampires which just feed off of our commercial energy. We go to work and then Pharaoh renders all the bricks. Pharaoh renders, is rendered with a life of a parasite, of a false king. It's, it's our deception which enables Pharaoh to live lavishly. We're the ones building the bank buildings as temples and the presidential libraries. You know, Obama isn't going to build the building. The slaves are going to build the building, right? The dumb debt slaves, the bond servants, the goy. So be convicted. <clears throat> I was reading from uh, Jeremiah yes, uh, yesterday, basically expressing how when you get anointed, Yahweh's voice, if, if you repent, you have to repent. To, of thinking that man can make law. You have to become a monotheist for, in order for Yahweh to uh, transform you. Um, <clears throat> John Denver says it. He was born in the summer of his 27th year, coming home to a place he's never been before. He left yesterday behind him. You might say he was born again. That's how the prophecy works. It speaks in parables. No matter what your age is, you can change teams like Moses did. He crossed over and he's 80. And some might say he crossed over when he's 40, when he killed a cop. He was an enemy of the state. This is a, a very big calling. Think of the movies, this born again thing is expressed. This transformation, this rite of passage is expressed 
in different movies, like think of Dances with Wolves, right? The Civil War uh, hero, he was willing to die for his country. He was, he was committing suicide for those who have ears to hear, those soldiers who are thinking about committing suicide, right? This is what we teach at the School of the Prophets, military veterans, former military. I'm a former Marine. I was willing to die on behalf of this polytheistic system, right? So we have to transform like Colonel Dunbar of the United States military cavalry and changed over to being one of the indigenous First Nation people. Smoke the peace pipe, man. <laughs> okay, that's one example. Another movie, The Matrix. You want to go on a hero's journey, brother, sister? You want to go on the, are you ready to climb the mountain? Are you what, ready to go to boot camp? Are you ready to be transformed with the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to be great? Leader of men, to be overcomers, to being noble, to being moral, to being righteous, to being heroic. Because that can all happen in an instant. Do you know that everything that I'm just talking about, that can happen in an instant? That's just how fast this victory is going to happen. <laughs> it's our rebellion. It's our like, no, this can't be true. What Wayne's saying can't be true. It cannot be true. We can't have a theocracy, even though we're living in a theocracy, which is a dark theocracy called Babylon. We've just been tricked. Right? Think of an American Indian. Our, if, if we took on the identity of an American Indian, we can see that this, what they call the U.S. Constitution, was just a deception. The Indians didn't have this voting, you know, that wasn't their way. They didn't need majorities. They listened to the most, uh, the, the great spirit. They knew the great spirit owned the land and they couldn't create a majority to say through man's vanity that man owns the land in the form of governments and corporations and private people. We don't own the land. Do you understand what this jubilee means and what a threat this good news is? That they had to create a different good news in the Bible, which is Jesus's birth, death and resurrection. That is a magnificent thing. However, it is not the good news because the good news is in the Old Testament and Jesus wasn't going around saying that, uh, telling everybody about his crucifixion. That wasn't what he was selling. He was selling the good news that people understood or they, well, they, I, I should say they didn't understand it. They were never taught it, but they understood for a, if they were poor, you know, if they were blind, if, uh, if they were enslaved, if they were convicted. All right, so what I'm describing in, in, in a bigger loop is the whole <clears throat> uh, rescue. In order to rescue, you gotta be a captive, right? You have to acknowledge uh, that you're a captive, right? And let God rescue you, right? You're enslaved. God wants to rescue you. Rescue, rehabilitate, release. So these, this is Yahweh's three-step plan. And we can, we can do this in less than a year. Right? This isn't, you know, the exodus happened in less than a year. So this is the witness. These are the stories of the people who transform themselves from slavery to release. So that's the goal. We want release. Exodus, Jubilee, the year of release from Deuteronomy, right? The year of release. This is, this is the owner's manual. We just haven't been obeying the owner's manual. You stiff naked ones. <laughs> There's good news in here. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. That's part, the anointing is part of the uh, rehabilitation. Cannabis of Exodus helps fight post-traumatic stress disorder and it's already proven to uh, help rehabilitate uh, police and military with post-traumatic stress disorder. Everything I'm telling you, although it's opposite of what Babylon teaches, is truth. And that's what a prophet is, telling you the truth. People hate it. 
He's a threat. He is uh, public enemy number one, <laughs> right? He's enemy to the churches. He's enemy to the fake pastors who teach crypto polytheism, right? So if you want some of that kind of salt, this is what you're going to get, not just from me, but you're going to get it from Jim Callahan, get it from uh, Brent Vanderwall, get it from uh, Brett Jones, get it from Henry Garman coming all the way from Ecuador, right? Yahweh's looking out through the whole world and he's trying to find his polytheists. Man, are there any polytheists out there? <laughs> right? They're all, uh, sorry, there are, are there any monotheists out there? Sorry, I misspoke. That is not Yahweh speaking. Um, that's why we should have an Aaron, you know? There's going to be people who, who, un, who speak out this, this belief in polytheism far better than me. And they do it in music already, in, in, and that's why, that's why this music playlist is part of the rehabilitation. And again, all three of these steps can, can happen very quickly. Or you can make these steps uh, last 10 years. <laughs> but but it, it can be in a twinkling of an eye. Like, oh, I get it. Oh, but you, we have to cast out from our temple any rebellion, whether it's our, our own doing what's right in our own eyes, right? Or because we're, it's getting beaten into us because we fear Pharaoh's always trying to be first in the temple, but we can't serve two masters. So to put the lamb, to take the seal of the lamb, so it, it becomes on the things that you think and do, take every thought captive in obedience to Christ, we have to rehabilitate. And part of this rehabilitation, we are gonna be performing through an, an real anointings using the exact ingredients, the exact, exact, exact ingredients. And by the way, if you think it's calamus, we say it's can cannabis. And at the Feast of Tents in Breckenridge, Colorado, we're gonna be using the cannabis of Exodus along with two types of cinnamon, myrrh, uh, uh, olive oil to create holy anointing. Those are the exact ingredients from uh, Exodus 30:23. Um, it's in proportions. We're going to use the ingredients. I have a brother in Christ named uh, uh, Adam Ledoux. And by when you say brother in Christ, that means a brother in the anointing. Anointing. Christ is the anointing. He gets it. When I talk to him about the, the stuff that I'm talking to you about right now, he gets it. It's not meant with... So when you say brother, you're referring to another person who is a monotheist. But, you know, but, but I, I agree. We, we are polytheistic in our activities because in captivity, because of the mark of the beast, we're, we're double-minded, right? So we're still working for, for Pharaoh, but we're planning our exodus, right? Uh, Jim and I, when we work, we know we're working for Pharaoh, but our minds, we're, we're, plan we're planning, we're like wolverines, planning our escape, or honey badgers, cooperating. God gives his genius in animals to show us lessons. Like, look how they cooperate. Hey, look how ants cooperate. Hey, look how wasps protect their turf. <laughs> right? So think like this as I re uh, end on Jeremiah. Um, Listen to our playlist of, of modern prophets of varying levels, you know, who understand they're trying to be monotheistic, but, you know, we all fail. Um, Christian a a Israelite reggae music. David Delane, I think you're my only viewer. <laughs> See, I have this day set a... Uh, this day, this is the anointing, putting the king, when you, no longer uh, Hakuna Matata time, we have a job to reestablish the kingdom. See, I have set this day 
I set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? What I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. I see it. I see you growing it, you God. I see it's you. I see your genius in all things. Then said Yah to me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it, like the mustard seed, a tiny idea grown into this grand mustard seed, a society, a mustard tree, where the people live in a land governed under a monotheistic theocracy called the kingdom. It could grow less than a year. This is a fast-growing tree for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. And the, Lord, the word of Yah came unto me a second time, saying, what, what do you see? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. <laughs> He's talking about Judah looking up at the Israelites, right? And he sees that Judah has been uh, taken over by Edomites. <clears throat> and the ten northern tribes are looking down, they're waking up to the idea, hey, the, the, the synagogue of Satan, polytheists, have been put on the throne in Jerusalem. We need to put monotheists on the throne in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Verse 14. I'm in 1 Jeremiah uh, 14. Then Yah said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all of the inhabitants of the land. And lo, while I will call out all of the families of all the kingdom of, of the north, saith that, the, that Yah... And they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, our throne, our temple, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I shall utter my judgment, judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me. He, he's talking about, imagine taking, a, a, you know, the, this series is called The Witnesses of Revelation. The two witnesses go to Jerusalem. See the sun coming up behind me? I want to shine some light on you, brothers and sisters. Um, the two witnesses of Revelation go to uh, Jerusalem. We go out in pair, uh, pairs to proclaim the, the good news throughout all of the land. Well, this, what I'm saying is that a good news, this is not good news to the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests and the elders. The Pharisees who believe in polytheism that they can make laws, that they should have voting and elections and uh, usury, right? And perpetual debt, right? The, the people that believe in that stuff, <laughs> they hate the good news. Okay, so there's going to be a, a, another showdown. Right? This is the biggest drama and love story ever created in the history of man because we're going to live it out through our activities, through our obedience to the king. The prophets who see, who have eyes to see and ears to hear, who actually come out of her in obedience and, and turn like Neo in the Matrix where you're just obeying the system and now you fight the system. Like Moses, you're enemy number one. Jesus, you are an enemy to the state, like the apostles. Like um, in the movie uh, Star Wars, right? Our only weapon like a Jedi is the word of Yahweh, right? Right, so part of the rehabilitation is to realize that you are not slaves, that you are in fact kings. You are mighty men of war. We are Yahweh's battle axe. We are his weapons of warfare. And he is a God of war that we, when he goes to battle, <laughs> when Yah goes to battle, it is 
Armageddon for the adversary. <laughs> it's, we're already in Armageddon. This war has already been waged on our people. Our minds and our bodies and souls have been waged upon. The blood has filled up to the bridles already with World War I and II engineered by the Edomites who are sitting in Jerusalem. Esau is, is bloodletting and culling the Israelites. We need to urgently sound to battle. And Jeremiah was called into duty to this war to tear down these wicked places. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. And where therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defended city and an iron pillar. Right? He's saying those two, they just stand there. They stand there as one, like John the Baptist. And they just start proclaiming the good news and start judging. There's two of them. You only need two judges. And they stand as judges who judge Judah and judge Israel. But we have to... We have to transform Israel. You listen, you got ears to hear. We got to transform Israel so that they're willing to go. Be willing to be a purified bride who puts the lion of the tribe of Judah on the throne instead of Esau, Edomites, Herod. The Herodians are on the throne today, just like there were 2,000 years ago. And there has never been justice because there's never been a jubilee until right now. That's good news, people. All right. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And thou, they shall fight against thee, but... Th but but shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to deliver thee. Hoorah! They screamed. Ah! Against the whole world, the two witnesses of Revelation step up and go, Bring it! For they stand against the whole system. Right? You want that kind of... Uh, mentality, this tribal identity, listen to our playlist. Please, it's free on YouTube. Christian Israelite reggae music. And we're, we're adding songs and you guys can suggest songs, but they need to bring out different elements of this tribal. Think of two. Think of David standing against Goliath. This is our future. You want the king to return, he returns when we're obedient, through us. As the Holy Spirit empowers us and encourages us and strengthens us and is, gives us, equips us with the ability, the spiritual gifts of vision to see how it all ends. It's already proclaimed how it ends. The prophets just do what the king commands. They're monotheists. They're unafraid. And when Yah puts his good hand, his, his strong right hand at our back, like it did with uh, Ezra, right? Four things Ezra was equipped with. <clears throat> Ted Wyland teaches this. Check it out. It's awesome. Is one, uh, 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 he equips him with a heart Right? The first step is to have the heart. This is part. So cannabis of Exodus actually gives you the heart. Ted Wyland would hate that part. Right? The anointing transformation, but it's true. It gives you the heart where you're willing to have your idolatrous ways dissolved. Right? So that the, his law can be written on your heart. So you fill back up. That's what the baptism by fire component from Matthew 3.11 is about. You fill back up with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit sounds like this. It doesn't sound like, hey, you sodomites, you're evil. 
The Holy Spirit sounds like this. Uh, rescue, re rehabilitate, release. Rescue, rehabilitate, release. That's the good news. It's about a healing process, not just condemnation. It's about forgiveness. It's about love. It's about being a champion to the people and lead them with inspiration uh, through the Holy Spirit of positivity, of being an ambassador to the kingdom, that there is a repent, for here's the kingdom's right here. All we gotta do is do what the prophets did because their prophecy tells us what to do. Prepare your heart, seek out his law, do the law, teach the law. That's, part, that's the healing. Rescue, rehabilitate, release. This is, what the, this is what the school of the prophets teaches in music, in art, and, and part of that uh, healing process is, is to start creating things that exemplify this musical wonder and creation of the heavens and earth and all of its magnificent beauty of children and everything else that's magnificent of the kingdom and express that in the form of, we can do it, we can do it, yes we will. Who's got spirit? He's got spirit, how about you? Right, God, Yahweh has spirit. We got spirit, we got spirit, yes we do. We got spirit, how about you? Do you have the span? And that's what we're gonna teach. That's our, our Jubilee celebration. Come to Breckenridge, October 6th and 8th. We're gonna have a pep rally.